Hello everyone, welcome back to our video series on electronic components. In this very first video, we will explore the resistor, a small component, but one that appears in almost every electronic circuit, from simple devices to complex control systems, such as a car's ECU. I will explain what a resistor is, what it does, how to identify it, and how it is used in real-life ECU repair. So, let's get started. Keeping a notebook for your notes can help you stay focused and understand the material more clearly. First, we need to understand what exactly a resistor is. Here is a simple definition. A resistor is an electronic component whose job is to resist the flow of electric current in a circuit. It can be used to reduce the current, to divide voltage, or to protect other components in the circuit. The unit of measurement for resistance is the ohm represented by the Greek letter OMO. In terms of construction, resistors are usually made from materials that do not conduct electricity well, such as metal alloys or carbon, and they are coated with an insulating layer. Inside a car's ECU, resistors can be found everywhere, from the power supply circuit to IC control circuits, and even sensor signal circuits, helping ensure that the current always stays within safe and accurate limits so the system can operate reliably. Shape and symbols in electronic devices, especially inside a car's ECU, the resistor is an important component. It is often made from carbon compounds or metal alloys. By adjusting the mixing ratio of these materials, manufacturers can create resistors with different values to suit each specific circuit in the ECU. And commonly in modern ECUs, we often see two types of resistors, plug-in, through-hole resistors, and SMD, surface mount resistors. The unit of resistance is called the ohm, written with the symbol ohm. We also commonly use kilo ohm, written as k ohm, and mega ohm, written as m ohms. Here's the conversion: one kilo ohm equals one thousand ohms. One mega ohm equals one thousand kilo ohms, which is the same as one million ohms. How to read the value of a resistor? Normally, small through-hole resistors are marked with colored bands. These bands follow a standard color code used worldwide. For larger resistors, usually 2 watts or more, the value is printed directly on the body. Examples include power resistors or ceramic resistors. In cars, you can often find this type of resistor in the blower motor resistor pack of the air conditioning system. For SMD resistors, the value is usually printed as numbers on top of the component. However, for very small SMD resistors, there is no marking at all. In that case, the only way to know the value is to check the manufacturer's data sheet or measure it with a multimeter and compare it with the same component in another device of the same model. How to read the value of a resistor. The way we read a resistor's value depends on the type of resistor. For resistors with colored bands on the body, we use an international color code. Here is the color code. Read slowly and memorize it. Black, zero, brown, one, red, 2, orange, 3, yellow, 4, green, 5, blue, 6, violet, 7, gray, 8, white, 9, gold, exponent, minus 1, multiplier, 10, ton, silver, exponent, minus 2, multiplier, 10, nanos, quays. Please memorize this table because during repairs you will use it frequently. Color band resistors commonly come in two formats, one, four band resistors. They encode two significant digits, then a multiplier band, and finally a tolerance band. Because they show only two significant digits, they are usually manufactured with larger tolerances, commonly 5% or 10%. These are used where very high precision is not required. Uh, two, five band resistors. They encode three significant digits, then a multiplier band, and finally a tolerance band. With three significant digits, they allow finer nominal values and are typically made to tighter tolerances, commonly 1% or 0.5%. In high-precision electronics, for example, a car ECU, you will usually find five-band resistors. How to read the value of a four-band resistor? To read the value of a resistor with color bands, the first step is to identify which band is the first and which band is the last. For a four-band resistor, band number four, the last band, is always gold or silver. This band represents the tolerance of the resistor. When reading the resistor's value, we do not count this band. 
the band directly opposite the last band is band number one. Next to it is band number two, and then comes band number three. Band number one is the tens digit. Band number two is the units digit. Band number three is the multiplier, a power of 10. The formula is resistance value equals band one, band, band two times 10 squared, band three. You can also think of band number three as the number of zeros to add. For example, if band three is red, according to the color code, red means two, so you add two zeros. Similarly, if it is orange, which means three, you add three zeros. Gold or silver appears only in the tolerance band, band number four. For example, if band four is gold, the tolerance is 5%. Now, let's practice reading the value of a few resistors. As you can see in the picture, we have a resistor here. When we look closely, we can see a silver band. This is the fourth band, the last band of the resistor. So, the first band is red, the second band is also red, the third band is black, and the fourth band is silver. According to the resistor color code chart, band one, red, means the number two, band two, red, also means the number two, band three, black, means zero, so no extra zero is added here, band four, silver, means a tolerance of 10%. Therefore, this resistor has a value of 22 ohms with a tolerance of plus or minus 10%. Next, let's read the value of another resistor. Just like before, we start by looking at the silver band at the end to help us find the first band. For this resistor, band one is orange, band two is white, band three is yellow. According to the resistor color code chart, orange means the number three, white means the number nine, yellow means four. Here, yellow is the third band, which represents the number of zeros we add. So we add four zeros after the digits. As a result, this resistor has a value of 39,000 ohms or 390 kilo ohms with a tolerance of plus or minus 10%. And next, let's learn how to read the value of a five band resistor, also known as a precision resistor. In a five band resistor, the fifth band is the last one and it represents the tolerance. Because tolerance colors can vary a lot, sometimes it is difficult to tell which band is the last one. However, if you look carefully, you will notice that the last band is always spaced a little farther apart from the other bands. By using this detail, we can easily identify the last band, the tolerance band. Reading the value of a five band resistor is quite similar to reading a four band resistor. The difference is that here, the fourth band represents a multiplier of 10. Band one, hundreds place. Band two, tens place. Band three, ones place. Formula value equals band one, band two, band three, times with band four. In simpler words, band four is the zero band. For example, if band four is by, it means you add three zeros at the end, just like band by in a four band resistor. So for the resistor in this example, band one is red equals two, band two is violet equals seven, band three is yellow four, Band four is red equals two, meaning we add two zeros. The last band is brown, which means the tolerance is 1%. Putting it all together, the resistor value is 27,400 ohms, or 27.4 kilo ohms, with a 1% tolerance. Similar to color band resistors, SMD resistors also have their own way to read the value. The difference is... Instead of using color bands, an SMD resistor has the numbers printed directly on its body. Also, SMD resistors usually do not show the tolerance information. We mainly see two types, three-digit SMD resistors and four-digit SMD resistors. For the three-digit type, the first two digits are the value in tens and units. The third digit is the multiplier. It tells us how many zeros to add. For the four-digit type, the first three digits are the value, the fourth digit is the multiplier, it also tells us how many zeros to add. Now let's look at some examples. Here we have a three-digit SMD resistor marked as 223. We take 22, then we add three zeros. That gives us 22,000 ohms, or 22 kilo ohms. Next, a four-digit SMD resistor marked as 822. We take 820, then we add two zeros. That gives us 82,000 ohms, or 82 kilo ohms. There are also SMD resistors with small values. For example, 0R Honey 2 means 0.22 ohms, 
4R7 means 4.7 ohms, and a marking like 0 or 0, 0, 0 means 0 ohms. In addition, there is another special type of resistor called a variable resistor and a potentiometer. First, variable resistor. This is a type of resistor whose value can be adjusted. Because it is usually small in size, it is called a variable resistor. On the screen, you can see its shape and its symbol when shown on an electrical schematic. Next, potentiometer. A potentiometer works in the same way as a variable resistor, but it is usually larger in size. It has an adjustment knob or lever and is often placed on the front panel of the device so that the user can easily adjust it. In cars, you can find potentiometers inside the air conditioning ECU, for example, the temperature control knob or the fan speed control. Another very familiar example is the fuel level sensor or fuel float, which also uses a potentiometer. About the structure and working principle, a variable resistor and a potentiometer are actually the same in function. They consist of a fixed resistive track and a movable contact called a wiper which slides along the track to change the resistance value. So, in today's lesson, I have helped you understand resistors from their structure and working principle to how to identify different types and how to read their values. I hope that after this lesson, you will no longer feel unfamiliar with this component because the topic of resistors is quite long. I have divided it into two parts so that it is easier for you to follow and so you won't feel bored during the learning process. In the next part, we will go deeper into the principles of operation, the power rating, and the calculation formulas for resistors. This will help you gain deeper knowledge and apply it in real repair work in the future. I know my videos may be a bit dry and sometimes difficult to understand, but if you truly want to learn ECU repair, please be patient and focus on mastering these basic concepts because without a solid understanding of electronics and components, I can say for sure you will never become a skilled technician. Once again, if you find this video helpful, please leave your feedback in the comments section so I can improve and make the next videos even better. Goodbye, and see you again in my next videos.